Welcome to Be The Wellness Podcast, where we help you master your body, mind, and the experience of life through insightful conversation, interviews with experts and thought leaders, all with a side of marital banter and some good old-fashioned humor. Yes, we are your hosts, Adam and Vanessa Lambert, and we're committed to helping you live life fully expressed physically, mentally, and experientially. Sit back, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation. Welcome, everybody, to Be The Wellness Podcast. Adam and Vanessa Lambert doing almost the last podcast of the year. Almost. Second to the last Damn podcast near. of the year. Yes. Yep. I know. Can you believe it? Another year. Yeah. We're just podcasters, man. Yeah. 2018 was so cool, though. Yeah. It was true. a good one. Yeah. We, we packed it in. Yeah. As we do. <laughs> As we do. Yeah. It was, <laughs> it was a good one. Yeah. Totally. So mm-hmm. what are we going to talk about? Well, we thought we would take this opportunity to kind of just let you guys know what our plans are for the next year. We know everybody is, even though it's, you know, I guess Hanukkah has happened, Christmas is right around the corner, New Year's is right around the next corner after that, Mm -hmm. Um, but everyone's already starting to shift their focus and think about some of their New Year's resolutions and goals and kind of what they're headed towards in the new year. So we thought we would just take a moment to update you guys on our plans as Be The Wellness for 2019, just so you have an idea as you're factoring in your plans for the new year, you can, um, you know, be illuminated to what our plans are. Right. And uh, yeah, and we can just kind of keep you guys in the loop in terms of what to expect from us next year. Yeah, because there's some changes coming, which is cool. There's some changes, yeah. Yeah, we're we're due for some changes. Mm Mm-hmm. And... um, they're coming. Yeah, they are coming. <laughs> and we're going to so, give you a map to them, yes, to those changes. <laughs> yeah, specifically a roadmap, which is cool. Yes, yeah, specifically, um, yeah. But let's talk just a little bit about the New Year's resolution thing. Yes. Because we, we talk about this almost every year. Mm-hmm. Like one way or another, we come up on it. And, you know, the the whole New Year, New You. In fact, I think we even have a post in Unveil Your Wellness called New Year, New You. Yes. So we've certainly been on this this wagon before, and there's like... There's something about that that's really refreshing, right? It's like it gives you a fresh lease. It's yes. a stamp. You're like, okay, now I'm here's doing the line this. In the you know, sand. here's here's what I'm doing, mm-hmm. um, which is great. Yeah. You know, for some people. Yes. For other people, it's not that great of a way to go about finding your motivation or deciding what to do. Right. right. It's like it's another way of putting off starting. Mm. You're like, oh, in the new year, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. Right. You know what I mean? And I think for a lot of folks, the reality is putting something off, you know, if it's not important enough to do today, then what's going to be different on January 1st? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So there's like this disconnect that can happen there. And then there's also like everybody knows it. I mean, in the in the fitness industry, in the gym business, and all of this stuff, it's like New Year's is like when all of this stuff happens, right? Like you don't even go to the gym. Like back when we used to go to Globo Gym, <laughs> you wouldn't even go during January because yeah. it was such a madhouse. But by February, you're back to the normal, you know, and all the people have fallen off and they're not doing it anymore. Yeah, well, and you know, it's interesting because I think uh, something that really resonated with me actually when we were at Rhythmia and when part of my ayahuasca retreat was this line about falling in love with movement. And it really resonated with me because the bottom line is like if you don't actually cultivate a love for movement, a love for health, a love for your well-being, then it doesn't matter what day it is (laughs) because you haven't cultivated that general connection and commitment to the feelings of health. And so like if anything, you know, really before you worry about making sure you get to the gym every day or before you worry about, um, you know, what kind of next 30 day cleanse you're going to do or whatever that is, it's, you know, it's often important to just think about like, how do I actually fall deeper in love with the story of my health right? and what it takes to create that? Yeah, totally. And what you're, when, what you're saying really is that you need to have, I mean, there, there's a difference, right? There's long-term strategies for health and then there's short-term strategies for health and performance and all of this kind of stuff. And so if you think about like a 30 day cleanse, 
there's certainly a place for those. Sure. But those are short-term strategies. Totally. You know, and you have to have the long-term strategies in play. Yes. And then utilize short-term strategies to achieve a certain goal or yeah, to, uh, you know, ramp up for something. Right? Totally. And people have unfortunately put short-term strategies in the place of long-term strategies. Right. And sadly, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't matter if you go to the gym every single day in January and you eat perfectly every single day in January, if the rest of the year you don't. Right. So I think for us, you know, it's, totally great if January is a benchmark for you to just grab a gear and to get even more deep into your practice or to try something new or like I said to fall deeper in love with the commitment you have to your health that we're all for it's Mm -hmm. like hell yeah if January 1st is the day you you want to fall deeper in love with yourself cool right (laughs) we're totally down for that but what we don't like or what we are, you know, hesitant to encourage people to do is to have January 1st be the first day that you start beating yourself up for the year. Yeah. You know, where you start saying like, oh man, I don't really want to do this, but I'm going to do this. Oh, you're such a loser. Why don't you get out of bed? Why do you eat that? You know, that's not, you know, that's not something that we are super encouraging about. And so if you know that that's historically the way it goes down for you, right. that you just beat yourself all the way up until the second or third week of January and then give up, right. <laughs> then how about a new strategy this year? Yeah, 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 try something different. Because that's, you know, I really like the way that you said that because it really is, it's like your your inner bully gets fatigued somewhere mm-hmm. around February, but yeah. it's completely reinvigorated, <laughs> reinvigorated in January, you know, and that that's not a, you know, it's it's... It's no fun to talk to yourself that way all the it time, really you know, and like and talk to any, you know, uh, self-improvement person out there and you, they'll talk about positive self-talk, you know, and positive self-talk is not, you're such a piece of shit because you didn't go to the gym. Here yeah. it is January and you said you were going to do it and you're not doing it, da, 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 you know, right. and like quieting that inner critic uh, is something that people do. Yes. You know what I mean? It, it, it's almost like a defense mechanism mm-hmm. because you just can't beat yourself up like that day on day on day on day. Mm-hmm. And so instead of quieting the inner critic by just stuffing it down and not worrying about these things anymore, what if you come up with an incremental way to fundamentally meet the demands of your inner critic? <laughs> you right. know, It's like a step-by-step process for getting through this yeah. and uh, fundamentally making the changes that you need to make for these long-term strategies. Mm, definitely. And I think that like that getting quiet piece of it is so, 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 so important, you know, from the stillness and from the quiet is where you can actually have new ideas and new inspiration and where new life is created and, and born into this world. So you can't just, you know, I mean, obviously Things are created from chaos too. Mm, totally. <laughs> you can create from chaos and you can create from stillness. So it just depends on what it is that you're trying to create and if there's a possibility to do it in a more gentle, more loving way this year. Yeah, totally. And I think, I mean, the, we're yeah, this could be construed as abstract, but it's <laughs> like what it, what it comes down to is you need to be challenged. And I mean, and I mean challenged across the board. So this is physically, mentally, uh, you know, all, all of these things like this is, we, we thrive in challenge, mm-hmm. but not so much challenge that we can't see our successes in it. Right. You know, so and- you're riding that fine line mm-hmm. of chaos into order, chaos into order, chaos into order. And it's got, you know, for some people that's going to be a pretty small sine wave, you know, it's going to be like a barely a blip. You're like, you can't handle that much chaos before you bring it back into, you know, for others, it's going to be a much larger wave. Right. Mm -hmm. But it's finding that balance in there that allows you to continue to progress in that well, whatever it is you're doing. And in our case, almost always it has something to do with health and fitness, you know, (laughs) And, and that obviously anybody that's been listening to us for a while, we know that 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 permeates so many aspects of your life. I mean, you can't talk about getting more fit without talking about your mindset around mm-hmm. training, right. you know, and the same with food. Like you can't talk about food without why they're you know, talking about the mindset around food or the reasons that you do things. So it, it permeates everything. It absolutely does. But and it's ultimately order out of chaos, order right. out of chaos and back and forth. And for, for some people, you know, I think the thing that a lot of people don't consider is that, you know, our lives are so chaotic and there might be so much stress and so much pressure that for you, 
the stress or the pressure it, or the, you know, what, like something that could be strived for is actually the quiet, mm-hmm. you know? And it's like, maybe for you, that is hard. Yeah. That is challenging. Yeah. To actually create any little bleep of quiet in your life would be the most challenging thing that you could take on. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, I think this is why over years of being in this industry and over years of tinkering with ourselves, like in just tons of different clients from different walks of life, like you just have to get to know yourself and understand like what is going to be the challenge for you that makes the difference? You know, is it going to be that 30 day strict thing or is it going to be 30 days of self love? Like what is going to be the thing that's challenging in the way that actually creates the growth in the way that you want to grow? Yeah. Yeah, totally. So let's let's talk about a like like let's give it a specific kind of example of this because, like we said, some people are, are different. You know, well, everybody's different. There's a lot <laughs> yeah. of individuality out there, but there are there's there's some people who can take something that seems overwhelming and break it down for themselves and see their own progress, right? Mm-hmm. And there's people who can't do that. Like if it's if whatever the thing is, whatever the program they're joining or the thing that they're doing is immediately too complex up front, they can't just be okay with only doing one of the things on the list, Mm -hmm. right? And our Unveil Your Wellness program is like that for some people. For some people, they thrive in there, you know, because it's uh, literally a checklist of all the things that we need, that we think you should be doing in order to live, you know, fully expressed and and continue on this long-term strategy towards health. And so for the people that it works for, it works incredibly well for. I mean, we're mm-hmm. four years deep in this. We've got people that have been in there for four years. And in talking with some of them, we're realizing that after four years, some people are just now really starting to hammer down everything on that list, mm-hmm. you right. know? And there's a lot of people who that has not worked for. Mm-hmm. It's been too overwhelming. It becomes yeah. an all or nothing thing. They're in for a month and they're like, oh, yeah, I'm really going. But then it's like, this is too much shit to do on a daily basis. There's too many things to check off, you know? So what we've wanted to create is something that solves that problem for folks mm-hmm. and enter the body mind roadmap. Yes. And because the, as people probably are gathering from listening to us and, and all of this stuff going on, we're, we're really, we've honed in on what it is that we do, you know, and it is <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally after all this time, <laughs> but we really are about the body, the mind and the experience of life. Mm-hmm. All right. So body, mind and experience. And so to solve these problems that we have, we've created a six month long roadmap that fundamentally will take you from zero or somewhere above zero (laughs) and, and move you through all of the habits, all of the things around nutrition, meaning food quality, food quantity, sleep routines, all of this stuff that we assign fundamentally as tasks within the current Unveil Your Wellness program. Mm -hmm. So if all of those tasks are too overwhelming, Right. Here's a way to incrementally bring those into your life. Right. Right. Yeah. So you're not going from zero to 60. Like today I did absolutely nothing. And tomorrow I'm going to work out, eat right, sleep well, drink yeah. the water, have mindfulness. Like it's, Yeah. Take it, a sobriety test. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's giving people a way to onboard those habits and to understand. Like I love the word roadmap because it's giving people a path to get from point A to point B, right? point A being wherever you are yeah. to point B being having a real legitimate understanding of how to grasp and work with your life in order to fall in love with your health and well-being. Yeah. Yeah. It's what do, what do I need to do today? What's the one thing I can change today that if I keep building on this is going to lead me to a place where now I have a long-term strategy. Right. 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 So the body mind roadmap is exactly that. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be habit based. It's going to be on Vimify, just like our normal programs. And it's going to incrementally work you through all of these habits such that at the end, you can drop into the body mind experience. Yes. Body mind experience. Body mind experience. Yes. Which is then the program that allows for, um, individualization. Mm Mm-hmm. Meaning individual nutrition programs, individual strength and conditioning programs, individual mindfulness programs, along with the base habits that you've developed during the body-mind roadmap. Yeah. 
It's going to be amazing. Of course, to top it all off, choose your own adventure for yeah. your experience part. So what, you know, what we're really realizing is that our commitment is to helping people master their body and mind so they feel fully expressed in their experience of life. And, you know, part of that self-expression for us is our retreats and adventures and the things that we go out and want to participate in and want to experience. But it could be anything for people. It could be, right. you know, grandparents playing with their kids or their grandkids and feeling like they can keep up with them. Or it can be, um, you know, being able to go for a hike with your son. We have a client who just did a hike for his uh, 60th birthday with his son. You know, just it could be whatever experience makes you feel as though you're fully expressed in your life. But that is what we're really committed to is that the body and mind, it feeds into your experience of life, your full expression of love and abundance and, you know, total badassery that you can think of. Yeah, totally. And if there's ever been an experience that you've been like, oh man, if only I, whatever, I would do that. Right. Almost without a doubt, the whatever, the if only whatever piece is somehow related to your physicality or your mindset. Yeah. (laughs) You know, like at at the end of the day, that's where that stuff, that's the crux of the issue almost every time. Because at the end of the day, you can do damn near anything that you put your mind to. If you have a roadmap. If you have a roadmap. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, we're not saying that you can go win a gold medal at the Olympics for Roman Greco wrestling. Right. If you've never wrestled and you're 70 years old, <laughs> like that's not, I'm not trying to like rain on, uh, your rain on anybody's parade, but that, we're not making any guarantees. You know what I mean? <laughs> Around that kind of stuff. This may not be an Olympic roadmap. This may not be an Olympic roadmap for everyone, but for these long-term strategies that we've been talking about for fundamentally nailing the the pillars it's this is the way to do it yeah absolutely Yeah. yeah and this has been a long time coming for us because you know we unveil your wellness honestly it has been an amazing super thorough incredible program that has really stood the test of time I mean the, it, it could go on uh, for the next five years with no changes and still right. be so relevant and so um so perfect for people to really create whatever it is they want to create. But what Adam and I have become more interested in is giving people a little bit more self-optimization and power to choose the things that they really want to focus on. Yeah. And so, you know, we do that for ourselves. We decide, oh, you know, for the next six months, we want to do this thing or that thing. And so we want to empower our client base to do the same. And so once you have this roadmap, once you have these fundamentals and you really understand the basics and have keyed into, you know, some of the found foundational aspects of your health and well-being, we want to empower people to then choose the pieces of it that they really want to focus on. Yeah. And so that's for us what this new year is going to be about is creating this new process for people to work their way in. And then once they're in, meaning they have completed the body-mind roadmap piece of it, they can now have the autonomy to say, okay, cool, this is what I want to focus on. This is the experience I'm looking to have, and so these are the programs that I want to support for that experience. Yes. So individualization, you Mm -hmm. know, and that's the thing. um, It's been – so individualization is a problem across the board when it comes to making health and fitness recommendations. You know what I mean? Advice is like – only as good as it is for the, or as specific as it it is to the person who's receiving it, right? Mm -hmm. And so in Unveil Your Wellness, I think, you know, to toot our own horn a little bit, I think we did a really good job of sort of giving a generalized program that Mm. works for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And you know what I mean? Like there's a lot of that that goes on in there. But there's a lot to be said for the individualization piece yes. and we can do much better by our clients by being able to do this and say, yeah. okay, you, you want to do this. Okay. Well then this is more in alignment with what you're trying to do. Right. Here's your nutrition piece based right. on, you know, your body type and based on, you know, the, the things, the, the mysterious filters that we're going to apply to all of this stuff to help you guys sort it out. Right. So yeah. Yeah. So and I cool. think that, you know, ultimately we, it's like, we want to give, personal coaching level service to every person without people having to 
quite frankly, pay for personal coaching. Right. You know, at the end of the day, it's like, how do you meet people? Because we understand not everyone can afford personal coaching every month for the rest of their life. Yeah. But they, we still want to service that that possibility for people to have that personalized experience. Yeah. And so we're really excited about this next year, finally kind of honing in how it would be possible to make that work and how to sort of structure things and how to also give people the roadmap was the really important piece of it because obviously you need to understand that foundation or the fundamentals of the philosophy and how we're coaching and what it all means before then you can decide for yourself what you should be doing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So you know, and, and just to, to be a little more clear on one of these things specifically. So we'll talk about nutrition, mm-hmm. you know, and there's no doubt that paleo or primal is still the foundational sort of base layer of our nutritional philosophy. It, it just is. It, right. it, it stands up. It mm-hmm. holds, it, it has stood up for 275,000 years and I think <laughs> it's probably going to continue, you know, and, but within that, there's a tremendous amount of individual variability. I mean, especially when it comes to food quantity Mm -hmm. and when it comes to meal composition, right? you know, so what's your macronutrient split, you know, and what, and then even beyond that, what types of foods are you putting in there? You know, and this is, it should be evident really fundamentally that this exists because we've got autoimmune paleo, we've got this paleo, we've got that paleo, Mm -hmm. we've got keto, but then we've got real food keto and we've got, you know, there's, (laughs) there's keto that's like cool whip and peanut butter, which is a new thing out there. (laughs) And you're like, ah, boy, you know, all right. It isn't so. (laughs) It's so, you know, and so there's, there's a lot of variation, a lot of variability in there. And so just to talk about specifically how this will go down. So in the roadmap, you'll learn about the base layer of food quality, mm-hmm. which is paleo primal for us, right? Right. Which is, you know, to be even more clear, it's paleo, but if you tolerate dairy, then you should eat some dairy because there's a lot of really beneficial stuff to it, right? All with the quality filter on it. So there's that piece. And then it is how to do that in your life, mm-hmm. how to actually continually over time continue to eat better and make real food the vast majority of what it is that you do. And then it is how do I measure the macronutrients that I'm eating and the food quantity that I'm eating in a way that's sustainable and that is not, um, you know, the, the people who like the numbers and really get nerded out on weighing and measuring. Awesome. Right. Weigh and measure. Yeah. It's, you know, it's the best, totally. it's the best way to do that but for the people who are not, but still need some level of understanding of what's a better, what's the, the best way for them to continue to move forward to avoid the trap that we've seen folks fall in with paleo and primal and especially with keto of, well, I'm, you know, fat's good. I should just be eating fat We're, you know, without any regard to the total amount and the fact that like it adds up really quickly, pretty soon you're <laughs> eating 3000 calories a day and before you know it, right. You know what I mean? So there, there has to be this <laughs> before, quantity before lunch, <laughs> before lunch. So the, the quantity piece has to be addressed, you know? And so for some people, just the fact that they're eating whole real foods is satiating enough and, it, and it, it, it turns enough of the internal wheels to sort of handle food quantity on its own. Mm-hmm. For a lot of people, that's not the case. And over time, this stuff changes, right? So like you, maybe it worked great in the beginning. You're like, oh, I'm so full and I'm so satiated and I'm so whatever. But then like weird other stuff starts to pop up and you're like, oh man, but I really liked crunchy things, you know? (laughs) And like, what's a crunchy thing that I can find? Oh look, paleo potato chips, you know? Right. And like, and this, this whole thing is an evolution. I'm, I'm realizing I'm climbing up on a soapbox here, but you know, it's my (laughs) podcast. It's mine too. Our (laughs) podcast. So, but the, the things that have changed, you know, since 2006, when we first really started doing this is that now there is a paleo section in the grocery store right. that's paleo processed food, mm-hmm. you know, that all ha- carries that moniker, right? So before when you went paleo, that was enough because there was no such thing as gluten-free donuts, right? you know, and now there is, and that mm-hmm. stuff is out there. And so it's really easy to get stuck in that trap, you know, and then there's no less than 7,000 keto cupcake cookbooks, you know what I mean? And it's like at the end of the day, they're still cupcakes, right? So it's more necessary now, I think, to bring the quality and quantity piece into balance when we start talking about how to do a paleo primal lifestyle um, long term. Mm -hmm. So for those that are not super into the weighing and measuring and the sort of neuroses around that, 
then we need a different system for that. So we'll teach you how to do that. We'll teach you how to say, okay, well, um, I don't know what my macronutrient ratio should be yet, but this is how I decide how much protein I'm going to eat today. This is how much I, you know, this is what my plate looks like, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got that skill. And at the end of the roadmap, you've got that nailed. And now you're going to roll into the body mind experience where you get to choose the nutritional strategy that you're going to partake in, you know, and obviously we'll help people figure out what that is based on their goals, their current goals and, and kind of what they know about themselves and what we know about people by body type, some out of type and stuff like that. But now you have the skill set so that now when you choose the nutritional strategy as part of body mind experience, you can say, Oh, okay, well I'm going to be eating higher carb, lower fat paleo. And this is what that looks like based on the skills that I learned in roadmap. It's going to be palm size serving of protein. It's going to be, you know, a, a two cupped hands full of carbohydrate and only one thumb of fat where somebody else might be coming in saying, well, no, actually based on what I've got going on, I'm going to be eating very low carb, higher fat paleo. And that's going to look like this, you know, but you have the fundamental skill set to make that plate based on the macronutrients and the, the sort of meal compositions that, that we think are going to be right for you or that you think are going to be right for you with our help, I guess is a better way to look at it. Right? Awesome. <laughs> Sounds amazing, right? <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I could tell you're super passionate about it. <laughs> well, it's, I am, you know, and the, no, and that's cool. because the, the thing of it is, is like, we just see it so often Yes. that people are like, ah, what's going on? I'm following, yeah. I'm, I've read the primal blueprint and I'm following it to a T right. and you're like, you're right. And it's, it's a blueprint. It's the mm-hmm. fundamental base layer of this. And it works perfectly for some percentage of people. Right. And some other percentage of people need some tweaks. They need some yeah. individ- individualization to that. Yes. And you also need to understand that over time, you may have read the, you know, the, the primal blueprint when it came out in what, 2004? five or six, something like that. Yeah, a long time ago, yeah. When it came out, you read it, you followed it, and it worked perfectly. But that was 12 years ago. You're a different person now. Right. Maybe something has changed. Maybe you had a baby. Maybe you got a job where you don't sleep. You know. Maybe you're 10 years older. Maybe you're 12 years (laughs) older. Yeah, just whatever, right? And so (laughs) you need some way of objectively determining what the new what the new plan is for you yeah, and how that's going to work for the next period of time until it stops working. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think honestly, like at the end of the day, what we're constantly doing as health coaches and as, you know, fitnesspreneurs, if you will, or whatever yeah. is trying to figure out like how to get people to have more success and not just, you know, success in one area of their life, like a well-rounded, healthy you know, fully embodied success. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really what we keep just trying to drill down and figure out and try to create new systems and get feedback from our clients and really just keep tweaking and creating because, you know, it is an ever changing landscape and your, you know, people are an ever changing landscape, but if the more you you take ownership of this information and the more that people help you to embody it, it, the more you feel empowered to really fall in love with the process instead of having all the resistance to it and being frustrated when something doesn't work and, you know, not having any context for why it might not be working or how to make changes. And it's like, I think for, you know, for most of us, well, I think for all of us, it's just really important that we keep educating ourselves about this process. And Mm so we're just going to keep creating better materials to educate you. (laughs) And that's really our commitment. Like how can we better educate people? How can we make it more accessible and more digestible for people so that they can really, really own their lives and own their bodies and own their sense of care for their, for their, for their whole life, you know, for the whole, for the well being of their whole life. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. So the way that body mind experience will be laid out is there'll be a base layer of habits that are universal. Like this is stuff that everybody needs to be dialing in, right? right. Things like like sleep, sleep and mm-hmm. water and routines and you know the, all the all the kind of stuff that if people are in unfamiliar wellness they're familiar with that stuff, right? And then there will be a nutrition module that is based around your goals and well, your goals. Your yeah. goals. <laughs> and <laughs> you and your goals. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be based around you. It's very and you-centric. It's you very know? mostly about you. <laughs> very mostly about you. And so the, which 
may bring up a question for people. Well, how are we going to create programs for every individual person? And that's a good question. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, a truly personal program is going to have to come from a coach yeah. and it's going to have to be personal training yes. or personal, you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching, yeah, absolutely. which we do, yep. you know, um, but there are filters that can be applied that will capture damn near everybody, you know, and you will, will help you figure out which one of those sort of modules that you're going to fit in. But, um, you know, humans are still humans across right. the board and there's some things that, that science and, and sort of ancestral learning has, um, ha, you know, kind of helped bubble to the surface that we can help identify people, you know, somatotype being one of them, um, Ayurvedic dosha being another mm -hmm. and the sidebar, like the similarities between those two things are just remarkable, but <laughs> in a lot of ways, <laughs> yes. you know, in yeah. a lot of ways they're not. And so, but yeah, but yeah. between the two, you get you can get a lot done. Yeah, you can you get know? some pretty unique filters that help people understand their unique path. Yeah, and the unique nutrition and sort of landscape of what they should be doing with themselves. Yeah, yeah. totally. And that would be literally caloric intake, macronutrient split, and then meal composition. Mm -hmm. What? So if I'm going to eat 50 grams of carbohydrate in a day, what are those going to be? made out of mm -hmm. what is it is that going to be all sweet potatoes or is it going to be white rice is it going to be some combination of these things what's where am I going to get that and there's definitely recommendations that can be made around that to help you fine tune and tweak it for yourself from to narrow the funnel so to speak from this vast array of whole foods that are available to you to the ones that work best for you or most available all that kind of stuff right yeah absolutely so that's the nutrition piece and then on the strength and conditioning side this is where the biggest change I think probably comes is that we're going to chunk out the strength and conditioning into eight and 12 week sessions and you choose mm -hmm. what it is you want to focus on for a period of time. And of course we'll create a suggested progression for folks, but we've recognized that there's so many people with different physical goals you know, and this is the, this is the biggest thing. There's no one workout program that's going to be right for everyone. Right. There's no one workout program that's going to be right for you forever. Right. Right. So they, we have to have this stuff built in there. And in Unveil Your Wellness, we managed that with a periodized seasonal program that kind of undulated people through all of these various modalities. There's a pretty damn solid, you know, general physical preparedness program, a GPP program. But there's people who want to specifically put on muscle. There's people who want to specifically be work their booties, work their booties. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> you know, so there's all of these other things in there. You might have a, a conditioning goal. You might be a traveling, you know, vacuum salesperson or whatever. You probably don't do that anymore, but you might be on the road all the time and you need something that's just body weight, right? you know, and you can optimize a body weight workout routine to be really good for somebody, yeah. you know? Absolutely. You can optimize a barbell routine for somebody that has a, you know, access to a barbell and a squat rack. You can mm -hmm. optimize something for that for those folks. You can take some somebody that has access to an entire gym. They've got an entire, a whole world of programming, you know, that they can deal with. And so by being able to section this stuff out by what your goal is, what you have access to, um, and at the end of the day, body type for some folks who are just like, I just want to be more fit. And you're like, okay, well, we can also help with that through somatotyping. Um, yeah, they'll be yeah. available. Yeah, there's some some unique ways to actually distill out some goals and what it is that you want to be focused on. Yeah, yep. And then it's easy to continue to build that stuff out. You know, it's like, here's a new, oh, look, seven more exercise blocks to choose from. You know? <laughs> well, and that's the thing is, you know, we we understand that you don't necessarily need to recreate the wheel all the time, but yeah. it's fun to have new programming. It's mm -hmm. fun to have something new to focus on. It's in it's interesting for us as humans. Right. So you know we want to create that for you guys where you can actually decide. Oh, I want to work on this thing for the next six, eight, twelve weeks, whatever it is that you want to do. And you know, don't forget we'll have things like handstand, you know, the handstand challenge or the pull-up challenge and things where that are a little more specific as well, where maybe you just want to work on a skill for a bit of time and dedicate some of your energy towards mastering one of those skills. Yeah. So our goal is just to keep creating this wealth of, you know, of modules, if you will, to, mm -hmm. to keep you guys 
engaged with your own health and fitness. And again, not even just engaged, but like in love with it, inspired by it, excited about it and interested in it. Because we know that the more that you're interested in it, the more you're committed to it and the more you enjoy it, the more you're going to see the results that you want to see in your life. Yes. 100%. Yes. And on the experience piece, if you can tie all of these goals into an experience that you want to have somewhere in the future, uh, preferably not too far in the future. Right. Now, all of a sudden, you've gained a level of motivation that um, you just, it's it's really tough to match. Yeah. I mean, if you think about training for competition, you know, and I think this is part of the reason why like tough mutters and half marathons and even marathons have become as popular as they are, is you have an event, yes. something that's holding you accountable. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Fundamentally that you are going to go do this thing on such and such, and such a date. And right. so you better get your and shit it's together. social and not only just yeah. the social idea of it, where it's like, that's your community, you participate in it, but there's a social pressure where you've better show up and you better be prepared and you better, yeah. you know, your, your teammates or the person you're running the marathon with or whatever, they're depending on you. So there's right. all of this great motivation to stay on track. And I think you're right. People like that sort of pressure cooker in order to keep them on the path. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. So, so do that. Yes. Do that often. Yeah. PSA. So, and I mean, we obviously provide experiences for you guys right. to do that with. And the, the cool thing about this body mind experience template and the way we're putting it together is that we are going to offer you things in each category. But if you have other things out there that you love doing, if you have a gym and you love your gym and you love training there, great. You can be part of, you know, the core habits and just part of the community and, you know, just have that support system that we offer through that, you know, through the core habits that that people can join in and just kind of check in on. Mm -hmm. If you have other experiences that you are looking forward to or that help motivate you, great, awesome. Otherwise, we provide them. We have our retreats. We have our adventures. We have these things for you. But that doesn't mean that you're all in or all out. We have right. ways and um, different pieces of it that you can participate in as it suits the rest of your life. Yes. Yes. 100%. Yeah, and the same goes for the nutrition piece. Yes. You're like, ah, I'm dialed. I got my nutrition dialed in. I just want to work on my some core habits and I want new exercises. Yeah, it's great. And we just want to support you where you are. And, you know, acknowledge all the great progress that you've made and support you in wherever you want to continue on. And if that's just maintenance, then at least keeping the maintenance interesting and intriguing Mm -hmm. and inspiring. Because, you know, even maintenance, even if we are comfortable in the maintenance phase, why not keep it cool? Why not keep it like something that we're looking forward to instead of like, oh, I just go to the gym and do my same five exercises (laughs) same same five same five people machines (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. whatever that is totally well and something happens too if you don't um if you don't continually check back in on stuff and and like switch it up occasionally like deviation from the path happens in you know centimeters Mm -hmm. right like Mm -hmm. a little bit off target a little bit off target a little bit off target and like mentally you're like yeah and i'm kind of still still on the same plan i still go to the same gym i spend the same hour there every day and all of this kind of stuff but there's definitely a a pattern there that we see of slow deviation Mm -hmm. and without something to kind of bring you back to center as in like the beginning of a new thing where now you're like relearning or learning new movements or something to keep you a little bit more engaged with what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Over time, you can, next thing you know, you're like, wait, how did I get out of shape? I'm still like doing all the same (laughs) things that I was doing before, but like all of a sudden it's not working in the same way. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, so it's good to, you know, it's good to mix it up. I mean, muscle muscle confusion is not a thing. Don't (laughs) don't get me wrong. But confusion, confusion is a thing. Confusion, though. confusion <laughs> is a real thing. Like, like exercise confusion is a yes. real thing. Yeah. Contusion, confusion. There's a right. whole bunch of other confusions out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can you can wallow in the other confusions, but yeah. not muscle confusion. Yeah, absolutely. So we're really excited about this new paradigm that we're going to be mm-hmm. rolling out. But we are not rolling it out on January first. We're not. <laughs> to get back to our original thought yes. process here. We are actually going to wait until February because, um, quite frankly, we just don't want to participate in the January madness and the whole thing. And, you know, we actually, I was just telling Adam this um, before we went live, I would be 
more inclined just to offer like a stillness challenge. And right. we may even just do that is throw up like a 30 day challenge of just cultivating some stillness in your life in the beginning of the year. Because I think ultimately the most important thing you can do is just kind of get your space and your mind and sort of your, the, I don't know, the, the groundwork laid for how mm-hmm. you're going to progress forward in this year. And there's some awesome programs out there that you can check out. You know, Allie Miller RD, who was on here, has a great keto program kicking yeah. off uh, January 9th. There's, there's a lot of great stuff happening in January and lots of challenges and lots of cool things. So if you're feeling like you really do want to dig into something and participate, you know, check her program out. There's lots of things going on, but what we're really committed to is like the long run. So catching you on the flip side of that, when you're ready to kind of settle into what you want to do for the year, that's where we really want to meet people and, and take them through the rest of the year and really progress them through, you know, whatever it is that they want to achieve. Yeah. Yeah. Get the basics, you know, hit the, get through the roadmap, get the skills, get all of that that Mm -hmm. you need in order to be successful in this long-term piece. And, uh, yeah, yeah, do it and just do it. Yeah. And so that is kind of in the health and fitness world, Mm -hmm. what we're planning to do with, body mind experience, um, the changes to unveil your wellness, how to sort of what's happening in that whole world. I'm also making some changes to authentic self, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously our experience in Rhythmia was so profound. Um, the plant medicine ceremonies that we participated in and, you know, I had a couple of clients there that were, have done authentic self and so I actually ran this idea by them because it really it felt like, you know, you have these moments where you just feel like, oh my gosh, this would be perfect. This would be amazing. And it's just like a divine sort of spark. And the spark for me was including Rhythmia in the authentic self curriculum. Mm-hmm. And I went back and forth and, you know, I wasn't sure, is it something that I do optionally or, you know... How how does that work? But what I really landed on for authentic self, and we'll dive into this more in the new year, but I just want to kind of tee people up to, people are asking about it already for 2019. And so I just kind of want to give a broad idea of what to expect for it. And I just really have decided that, you know, a week at Rhythmia will be a required piece of it. So I really um, feel so deeply inspired and connected to how that week at Rhythmia changes your brain, changes who you are, that the authentic self program just dovetails and complements it so well. And I just really want to work with people that are ready to dive into that depth with themselves. And, um, you know, I talked to Jerry who was on the podcast while I was there about this program and he was absolutely all for it and loved it and said, you know, I trust you implicitly to like bring people through this process and, um, you know, collaborate in the way that you see fit with your program. And I'm just really, really excited and expi- and inspired to finally have a place like Rhythmia where I can feel comfortable to bring people to that medicine and bring them to that work and have that as part of the authentic self program. It's just really, really exciting. Yeah. So folks who've been thinking about doing it or folks who've even done it in the past, but are ready to do the plant medicine work, you know, we've had people repeat the program and it's one of those programs where you get something different out of it every year, new awarenesses, new developments. So it's one of those things that if you've done it in the past, you want to repeat it and do the plant medicine work with us. um, We welcome you to come back. We love our, alumni authentic selfies Mm -hmm. and um and that will be launching a little bit later this year it's going to be because of that plant medicine work i feel like i can condense the time frame so where it was a year we're going to condense it down to nine months um and that's what happens when you do plant medicine you get time back (laughs) yeah yeah it's a it's a shortcut yeah it's a shortcut so um so yeah i just feel really excited about that and it just all felt like it clicked into place and just feels like a perfect fit for next year and for authentic self moving forward so folks who are interested in that Um, We'll have links in the show notes where you can go in and actually apply for that. And so 
I want to make sure that I actually talk to each person, you know, really communicate about this process because it's a little bit different than signing up for your typical program. But if you are ready to go deep and really dive into this stuff next year in 2019, you can um, submit your application and I'll hop on the phone with people and just start talking to them in the new year about what that process is going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Because it's, um, and you and you said something that's like change who you are and like it seems to me though that it's like just like authentic self it's not changing who you are it's like uncovering who it's you are it's remembering you know what who I mean? you it's are. remembering who yeah. you are and it's 100%. so much in alignment with with what goes on down there at rhythm yes. i mean it's yeah they're really it's, a hun- it's you're 100% right yeah. yeah it's it's not at all changing who you are it's remembering who you truly are yeah. because that person is already inside it just may be covered up with you know a couple divorces and some kids or yeah. just some heartache just the or battle just, scars of life. Yeah, you just know? the battle scars. Yeah. yeah. Even just like lack of sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll do it. It'll do it. Yeah. So no, it really is about, um, just, you know, again, what we're committed to is creating the most powerful programs that we can create. And so we are going to seek out the best possible things to include mm-hmm. and resource and collaborate and, you know, make a part of our programs because this is what we're committed to. I mean, it, it's, you know, we could just keep putting out programs and, you know, whatever, just, we can produce content. Like it's not hard to produce content at the end of the day. And we all live in a content machine. Like it is being produced everywhere around us all the time. And we don't want to just produce content. We want to produce meaningful life change. Yeah. You know, we want to produce something that when you look back on your life, you were like, fuck yeah, I right. crushed it. And if that's not what you're saying now, then we're going to keep trying to create things that can make that difference to you so that you can feel that way about your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really good distinction that you brought up. You know, it's like the difference between content creation and, and coaching. Yeah. You know, and actually Greg Everett, who's the, the, I don't know, founder, creator or whatever of Catalyst Athletics, who's an Olympic weightlifting coaching facility and company in Oregon. And he said at one point, um, because he generates the performance journal, Mm -hmm. right? Which forever, like the performance journal was like way back in the day. Oh yeah. Um, pre CrossFit, -CrossFit, NorCal strength and conditioning days, you know, and it's the performance journal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The performance journal. Mm -hmm. And you know, so he wrote that, writes it. He's an incredible writer, which is, he's he's an odd combination of things like as a guy, but (laughs) he's, he's like, super dialed on grammar. He's uh-huh. like almost like a grammar Nazi type, you know, in that <laughs> regard. But then he's just like burly Olympic weightlifting guy. But he said at one point, and it really stuck with me. He's like, well, when you're kind of get into this business, you can either get into it to create content or you can get it, to get into it to create athletes. Mm. And we got into it to create athletes and mm-hmm. that's what we're doing, you know? Yeah. And it's really, it's really true. It's, I mean, obviously you have to generate some level of content in order to, um, to do it, to engage, to engage yeah. and mm-hmm. to do it. But fundamentally what we're interested in is creating the athletes, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, proverbial athletes. Right. right. And yeah. exactly. That's, it's a good thing to note on yeah. is that it's not about like, we don't, you don't need to go to the Olympics. Remember we told you it's not a roadmap to the <laughs> Olympics, but being an athlete in your life. And we yeah. talk about the athlete's mindset and, you know, being athletic about the way you live your life and not yeah. just being, you know, proverbial couch potato of yeah. your life, but like actively participating right. in the co-creation of your experience. Yeah. 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 And so what does it look like to be a, you know, an athlete of your life? If it's, well, you set a goal and you go about achieving it. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's, it covers all the bases. It really <laughs> you know? does. It's yeah. Like, I want to stop having all of these, this negative self-talk. Okay. Well, there's a goal. Here's how you get around to doing it. You know? Yes. I want to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Okay. That's a goal. Here's how you go about doing it. You know I mean? Yes. It really is just a fundamental process for achieving, mm, you know? Totally. I love yeah. that. Yeah, so lots of new changes in the new year, but not on the new year. (laughs) Right. It's the Chinese New Year. Yeah, exactly. Close. It's pretty close, yeah. I do love the Chinese New Year. I wonder which one it is this year. I'm not sure. I believe we're coming into the year of the pig. Really? No. We just came out of dog, so what's next? But did we just come out of dog? Or 
I feel like maybe... Yeah, because my little brother just had a baby and he's a dog. Oh, he's a dog. I looked it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I think it is pig. Yeah. You're right. It's pig. Rooster dog pig. Yep, rooster dog pig. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, actually, the year of the pig is great, though. It's a yeah. very, like, social and, like... You're going to have to watch out because you're going to want to party a lot, yeah. <laughs> eat a lot. <laughs> yeah. The pigs love just community and socializing and all of that good stuff. So it's a good yeah. year for that. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. And so we're going to give lots of opportunities for it <laughs> <laughs> and then tell you not to do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come and enjoy yourself, but not too much. <laughs> but not too much. Yeah. Such is life. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow, we're really excited for the new year. Um, we hope that you guys have had a wonderful holiday season, are having a wonderful holiday season, and that you know you take a little bit of time just to really think about what's important to you in this new year. And instead of doing things the same way you've done it every year in the new year, Think about doing something slightly different this year. Think about, you know, what would it look like to make some changes that really would support the life I'm trying to cultivate in 2019? Yeah. What what would be that what would be the self-care or the real foundational love or change that I can give my mind and my body to support the rest of the year? And what does that look like? I really right. encourage you to to think about that as we wrap up the end of 2018. Yeah. Reflect. 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 <laughs> be like folks. A, yeah. Be like a bike. Reflect. No, like no. a mirror. Like a mirror. Yeah. Like a <laughs> much <laughs> more obvious choice. I was thinking the reflectors on the wheels. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that works too. <laughs> but a mirror <laughs> makes way more sense. <laughs> yeah. Be like a bike. Ride. <laughs> Ride. Roll. Wheel around. Roll. Get All stolen. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So, um, again, if you guys are digging or wanting to start digging some keto action, then definitely check out Allie's stuff. We'll put a link in the in the notes for her program that starts in January. Yes. If you're interested in authentic self and the Rhythmia process, then also go to the show notes. Check out the link down there. You can fill out an uh, application. Mm-hmm. It's an application to talk to Vanessa. <laughs> Basically. You know, I mean, I have to take applications these days. Yeah, you know, it's just busy. Um, but do that stuff and check it out. You know, just get the conversation started. And um, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I really encourage people if you've got any, like, any part of you that has an inkling of curiosity, like, I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation because at the end of the day, it may not be right timing right. or it may not be you know, perfect for you, but within that conversation could open up something else that might make more sense for you or, you know, or whatever that is. So I love having an opportunity when I can make a difference for people and kind of when I can tell them what to do. It's my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, Vanessa loves nothing more than somebody calling and saying, "What do I do?" She's like, "Oh, I know. Oh, I know exactly, I know what, you exactly what to do." do. <laughs> Hold on, let me go get my bike so I can reflect. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna mail you a bicycle. Look into it. Tell me what you see. Okay, well, <laughs> that's enough of our comedy hour. Yeah. We love you guys. We wish you the happiest of holidays, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. And I don't